Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Mass. So whether you're watching online from the parking lot or got your clocks in line to get here this morning, we welcome you. And so as we begin our Mass, I invite everyone here to please kneel and prepare to sing.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And we'll pray the uh, confitier. It's on the inside of the cover of the missal. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish, in us, nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O oh Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all those split them in two, and placed each half up opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set, and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire part and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river the Euphrates. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Glad you're here an hour earlier than usual. You made it. Good job. We're going to be watching closely to see people start trying to come in about 45 minutes from now. Let's all laugh at him. (laughs) Almost 30 years ago now, I had a chance to do a pastor exchange, and I got to become the pastor for six weeks of San Juan County, so covering the San Juan Islands. Doesn't that sound like a hard assignment? For those of you who've been up there, it's just it's exquisite country. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and what made it even more fun for me is I got to live on my boat and go from island to island for the masses. Uh, total change from the pastoring that I was doing at that time. And probably it was just a wonderful experience all the way. And about halfway through, I, start began, I began thinking, I want to make this last. I'm going to talk to the bishop and see if I can be up here permanently. Um, you ever had that experience with a really good vacation? or a sabbatical or something like that, you say, I want to lock this in. So hold on to that thought for a minute. In the account of the transfiguration today, Peter and James and John were with Jesus when they had this awe-inspiring experience. And Jesus appeared in all of his glory before them. And it was a peak experience. I've got this great insight. You know where that phrase, peak experience, comes from? Probably comes from that from the Mount of Transfiguration. Isn't that an amazing thought? (laughs) Come on, laugh, wake up, wake up. (laughs) You guys are slow this morning. Um, 
So what Peter did is kind of what I wanted to do up in the San Juans. He wanted to build three tents and hold on to that experience. That's what that would have referred to. And as soon as he did that, it said the cloud overshadowed them, and all of a sudden, Jesus alone was there. So I want you to think about that line. Jesus alone remained. We've had a lot of our high school students over the years do the encounter weekend or the search weekend. We've had a number of adults in our parish here do the Christ Renews His Parish Retreat. Experiences like that where our students have these powerful experiences, not just of God, but of community as well. A sense of being able to be vulnerable with each other, of being accepted for who they are at the deepest level. It's, it's life-changing experiences, but it too has to eventually kind of pass, and Jesus alone remains. One of my closest friends, Father Rock, was one of the best friendships I've ever had in my life. It was just energizing, um, enjoyable in the deepest way. Um, Father Rock is now in memory care at Maryville. So as you can guess, the relationship has changed dramatically. I still visit him there. Jesus alone remains. Can I see where I'm going with this? I've been here as your pastor for 15 years now, and I can easily say that this has been the peak experience of my pastoring years. The vitality that you bring here, even for an hour earlier Mass on a really crummy March day, to see you all here responding fully to the singing and the prayers. Um, I'm energized by all of you, and I'm deeply grateful for the time that I've had here. Uh, many of you know that this summer I'm being reassigned, at my request, to a smaller place, kind of moving down towards retirement maybe 10 years down the road. Um, so I'm really, really grateful. I'm also grieving in some way just because of the friendships I have with many of you and the love I have for this parish. And Jesus alone remains. That has to be the focus of my life. I know that. I'm living by that. There's a prayer that we use at the end of Mass, one of the weeks of Advent, that I really like. Listen to these words. As we walk amid passing things, teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. I like the juxtaposition that's there. We're invited to live fully the relationships we have, the gifts, the blessings that God gives us in this world, to not hold back on any of that, and, not but, and to hold firm to our hope of heaven. So it's both at the same time. And if any of you are doubting that Jesus truly is enough, let me assure you that when your career comes to an end, when your kids grow up and move, move out of the house, maybe when your spouse dies, when your health changes, Jesus will be there for you because Jesus alone remains. And the ultimate truth of our faith, and let me underline this, the ultimate truth of our faith is this. When we die, Jesus alone will remain. And folks, that's what Lent is all about, to help us keep that perspective front and center. We can push it away during a lot of our lives. We know it's true, but we, didn't, we tend not to give it any attention in our lives. So I urge you, as we continue into this second week of Lent now, think about the Lenten practices that you're committing to already and use those as a way of remembering that Jesus alone will remain and prepare for that and trust that he will be with you and each one of us as we walk through every day of our lives and into all eternity. Jesus alone remains.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us direct our petitions to the Lord. That this Lent will inspire each of us to respond more fully to Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, especially in the Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from depression, anxiety, and mental illness, and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seminarians, especially James and Justin from this parish, we pray to the Lord. For those preparing to receive sacraments for the first time this Easter, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers we bring in silence, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you have heard our petitions, and we ask you to answer them as you will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for watching your time and getting here an hour early. Grateful. And welcome back to those of you who've been away and are gradually coming back. We're delighted to see our numbers increasing. The sound from up here in front is sure different with the masks off, for those of you without masks. So thanks for that, too. A couple things coming up. We have a newcomer's welcome this afternoon right after the next Mass. If you want to stick around for a bit and you're new to the parish, it'll be a brief introduction to our parish, a chance to connect with other new folks in the parish as well. 11.15 or 12.15 downstairs in the fireside. And also we're in the process of getting our altar servers back. So uh, if you're going to be interested in that, watch the details for it very shortly and we'll have uh, altar server training and get our old people renewed in how to do it and the new folks train. Father Tony will be leading that up with us as well. And right after Mass, instead of coffee and donuts downstairs, we're serving low-quality dog food. <laughs> in honor of Lent, of course. So, come on down. <laughs> Woof. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.